Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points that I'll be discussing are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and as you can see, I was able to pick up the other two Lantern Toys 7-inch Predator figures. These, of course, are from the Hunter series, exclusive to Walmart. Got the Jungle Hunter right over here from the first movie, and the Berserker, which, if I remember correctly, is from Predators. If you watched the review on the City Hunter, you'd have known that I really liked that figure. A lot more than I expected to, actually, so I'm pretty excited to dig into these two. Will I like them just as much? Only one way to find out. Let's take them over to the review station and dig in. Since we talked about the packaging in the last video, I'm not going to spend too much time on the boxes except for one pretty big thing. Again, we see this is the Predator Collection Hunter series, only at Walmart. Three figures on the wave on one side, nice wraparound logo on the other, not much at the top. But the back is where it gets kind of interesting, and I'm curious to see if you notice. Just like last time, we have product shots that tell us how many points of articulation there are, and what figure it is. But then there's this. In the last video, I talked about how this Electro Claw weapon was nowhere packed with the City Hunter Predator. But it turns out that this is supposed to go to all three figures, and I didn't realize that because this figure's arm matched the product that I was reviewing. This is needlessly confusing. The alien figures were very specific about showing which accessories went with which figure. So naturally, I just assumed that was the case here. I don't know why they did it this way. I think it's kind of confusing and needlessly frustrating if you're a parent or a kid and you don't realize that you have to get all the figures to get the accessories, but it is what it is. It's how they did it. Uh, one thing I didn't mention the last time is that the figures do have this sort of elastic strap holding them in place, but pops pretty easy. And again, both figures come with this nice little insert piece you can use for figure photography. Overall, I do still like the box, but I am going to be docking it a little bit because of how misleading the accessory information is, so half a point. But let's be honest, you're not here for boxes, you're here for figures, and out of the package, these do look pretty nice. Just like the City Hunter, they both come to about seven and a quarter inches. And I was also really impressed to discover that there isn't a whole lot of reuse in the line. The hands might be the same, and I do think that the feet on the Jungle Hunter are the same as the City Hunter, but otherwise they're completely original sculpts. Taking a look first at the Jungle Hunter, wonderful mask. We have the little uh, scope here on the side of the helmet. The dreadlocks are kind of pinched off though behind the shoulder cannon. Still, they're nice and soft and well sculpted. It's cast in a nice translucent plastic with some green splotched on to show it coming back from being invisible. Nice detail on the shoulder cannon. And that silver wash really does pop. Jungle Hunter skirt piece is a bit different and this one actually has some paint detailing on it unlike the City Hunter. Nice big blades. I'm a bit surprised though that the armor piece is metallic silver but that they didn't continue that there. The parts where it's covered in silver definitely pop a lot nicer than the green. The green parts just really feel kind of like they're just kind of caked on. Absolutely no paint detailing on the back. This is a really nice sculpt though for the Jungle Hunter and I think it's a really cool idea that they started with the invisible version. Really makes it stand out from the City Hunter. Hopefully if the line continues we'll get another version of this completely colored in. Moving on to the Berserker, there is a lot to discuss. Really cool distinct mask that the Berserker has with this bottom jaw piece and of course shoulder cannon. Really nice spotted design tampoed on there. Got that nice little swish of red too. But if you remember, one of the issues with the City Hunter were the parts that they didn't paint in. And we do have that issue here. Unlike the City Hunter, the forearms are called correctly, but you'll notice that they paint part of it and it looks really nice, but then other parts they just sort of leave blank. You can also see that on this arm and the two legs, even the side of the torso. That said, we do get more of that really nice pattern on the legs and even some extra red on the thighs. Nice bronze armor, really sculpted well. And they did paint the back on this one, so that is nice. <laughs> Gotta say, I do love the little boots. At the end of the day, these are $10 action figures, so I don't begrudge them from pinching a few pennies here and there. The unpainted straps on the Berserker is a bit jarring, but nothing as much as the City Hunter was with those forearms and calves. So I'm actually going to reverse my judgment from the last figure and grant these two one whole point. Moving on to posability, their heads are on a ball. The Jungle Hunter can look this way pretty nicely. Not so much to the other side though because of the dreadlocks. Also because of those dreadlocks, you can't really look up or down. Really nice tilt though. Shoulder cannon will turn all the ways. Left arm goes up that much. 
right arm goes up that much. Complete spin on this side, not so much on this side. Single jointed swivel hinge elbow can flex that much. And I was actually wrong in my last video. Thanks to this being translucent, I can see the engineering inside. This is not on a ball. It's just a swivel for spinning. And again, we have that great predator waist, back, front, side, side, all the way around. Ball joint hips give a little wiggle, goes out that much. Not as much forward kick as the other one, but a bit back. Single jointed knee, and again, the feet have these great barbells in them, and if you just sort of tuck the plastic underneath, you can get a lot more reach. Pretty much the same deal with Berserker, but you can look side to side a lot better. Again, no up, little bit of down, tilt, tilt. Shoulder cannon. Swivel hinge shoulders are hindered by these pauldrons, but you can raise them a lot higher. Same single jointed elbow, same great waist, and a pretty good spread. As I said in the last video, I really like the articulation in these figures, so it should come as no surprise that these two also get one whole point. Moving on to playability, we can see that the Jungle Hunter comes with the much fabled Electro Claw, and Berserker comes with this Plasma Bazooka. The claw! The plasma bazooka pops on the berserker predator, and wow, this is way more cool than the other one. Definitely leaving this on him. Playability is, of course, more than just accessories. It's also about how well your figure plays with others. Here we see the berserker and the jungle hunter with the city hunter, and yeah, all three together, they look great. Combined with the seven inch lanard aliens, and yeah, this is an incredible collection. I don't know what the future holds, but there's a lot of possibilities, especially if they're going to be drawing from sequels like Predators or maybe even the new one. I'm sure this won't surprise anybody, but for playability, they get one whole point. This brings us to the last subject, price, and while it does feel like they are a bit light on accessories, they are heavy on fun. For only $10 a pop, you really can't go wrong, so that's going to be one whole point for price, bringing their entire grand total to 4.5. So, just to recap, one, packaging. Still a nice box, still a bit misleading. Two, presentation, really great sculpts. Better paint apps on this one than the City Hunter, though they did cut some corners with Berserker. Three, posability, great articulation on these Predators. I've noticed now that I've played with both together that the aliens actually are not as well articulated as the Predators, especially in the waist and the ankles. The Predators also benefit from a ball jointed neck. Four, playability. Not a whole lot of accessories, but they are a lot of fun to play with, and you can, again, mix and match. Quick note on that. I was curious if the Plasma Bazooka could go on the other shoulder cannons, and I did feel a bit of tear, so I wouldn't try it. And of course, five price, again, 10 bucks, can't beat it. I absolutely love these Leonard Alien and Predator figures. I know they make 12-inch Predators as well. I haven't seen any of them in the wild. I doubt that I'm going to pick any of those up because that's not really the scale I'm into. But who knows, maybe I'll see them and I'll fall head over heels in love. I have no idea what the future holds for this line, but I hope that they keep making lots of figures. A lot of potential for Predator. There's still some other aliens left, and I'd love to see them maybe branch out and do some heroes. As a Predator fan, we've wanted Dutch's team for a long time, but we can't really have movie accurate versions of them because of the likeness rights. These being a bit more stylized, that might be a nice way of getting around that. Whatever they do, you can be absolutely certain that I'll be here to check it out, and I hope that you'll check out some more videos on this channel. If you enjoyed this content, please like it, share it, do all the YouTube rigmarole, and help me spread the word. This is a new channel, so anything you can do to help me out is really appreciated. I'll see you really soon. Until then, have fun.